Welcome to Splatterlock, the mysterious and ever so messy kingdom that invites ten brave young warriors to go head to head with those despicable defenders as they compete to capture the greatest treasure in the land, the Splatterlock crown. That's what I call Barack Obama! Can the defenders keep the castle safe from the attackers? Or will our young warriors overcome every hurdle and find a true champion to rule the kingdom? Good thing I'm indestructible! So who will tumble? Who will teeter? Who will tilt? And who will go? Splash! Hello, I'm Dick, which means by a simple process of deduction, he's dumb. And this, this right here is Splatterlock, the magical and mysterious kingdom that changes its ruler more often than he changes his undercrackers. Yeah, I change them every month. <laughs> and I think that proves my point. This place changes their king and queen on a daily basis. I don't think they actually need to. It's just that they really like to hold the tournament that surrounds the selection process. And this tournament is made up of the following three rounds. In the moat challenge, ten attackers will enter, but only the six fastest will survive. Ditch the dungeon will reduce that number down to four. And capture the crown is the final round where one brave attacker will claim the majestic Splatterlock crown. So three top tests await our brave young warriors, and each one is packed full of awkward obstacles. Let's show you what we're talking about. Here's the moat challenge in more detail. The attackers start in the Splatterpult, which hurls them into the moat. They then head up the slippery slope and cross the rolling maze. The impossible incline is next, followed by the beastly battle axes. The bridge of disaster then leads to the debilitating disc, which completes the course. And to make it even harder, it's all against the clock. Yes, only the six fastest will make it through, so the attackers will be trying to keep the splats down to a minimum. The last thing any of them want is to be wasting valuable time in the moat. The thing is, the kingdom has employed a bunch of ne'er-do-wells to slow them down at all costs. We are, of course, talking about the defenders. Here's all six of them, but the ones defending the moat are... Scab, he's a big bad barbarian. Mediva, she's a chain-mailed mischief maker, and... Thorn, he's... he's just annoying. Who ordered the pain cakes? Thorn scores! Scab stabs! The game away! I've changed my mind. They're all annoying. Down in the moat, the defenders are in position. Thorn's priming his flatzooka, Mediva's taking aim, and Scab's getting angry. Here's Paige! Grapes! I think she likes grapes. Well, I hope she likes flat too. Wamongol! Well, it's always important to get the tournament off to a good start, and I think our first attacker has just done that perfectly. Nice one, Paige. Come on, Paige, where are you? Rule number one. Before you start any day, you must have your pain cakes. Paige ignores Thorn's dietary advice, but the mace gives her food for thought to Lulaberries. She nearly made it, but as they say, a miss is as good as a splat in this tournament. Hey, is it true that you play the splat song, yeah? Oh, I'll play it too. Pow, wow, wow. Pow, wow, wow, splat. Pow, You're embarrassing yourself. I'm embarrassed. Paige rattled Mediva's cage there, but it just led to a splat on the incline. Yes, the defender went on a slime spree, making the incline extra slippery for our young attacker. And the battle axe is now... Oh, a water blast, and she's down again. You know, I think the moat gargles are the unsung heroes in this round. Their cheeky little water blasts almost always catch the attackers out. Paige is back up. Oh, it's another water blast, but she survives and prepares to take on the first axe. Wait, I think there's more. Yes, a third water blast, and this time Paige can't hold on, and she's back in the gloink. Well, the gargoyles are certainly having a blast today. Hey, Paige, I play instruments too. All you need is a shield and a sword. Ah! Oh, how annoying. Paige agrees and jumps into the moat. Please stop, Scab. How's that? Thank you. Page finishes in 9.36. But we like to finish with some goo lovely. It's peanut butter jelly time. Is it? Hello, Taya. Hello. Pancakes are better than peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly is better than you. No, it's not. Pancakes are better. Peanut butter and jelly. Taya decides to win the argument by shouting, but the ever-so-quiet rolling maze has other plans. Yes, the big old maze quietly goes about its business and splats yet another attacker. Taya now at the bridge of disaster. How will she cope with Scab? Easily. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, great. And just like Paige, Taya decides it's quieter in the moat. Now, this is what you need to cross the bridge. Total silence. Not some barbarian banging on a drum. Yeah, but if the round were distraction-free, then you wouldn't have splats like this. True? Taya crosses the finish line in 8.33 and celebrates in style. Ready for the battle! OK, Giancarlo, but are you ready for the splattle? Hey, Giancarlo, I heard you like your hair. Yeah, I like my hair. It's unbelievable, child. Yeah, right. 
Something tells me John Carlo doesn't want to chat about hair right now. I agree. Flopsy Pat Bams. Rinse and repeat. That's what I always say. Wrong way round, Thorne. More like repeat, 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 and then rinse. Giancarlo finishes in 5.26, the fastest time so far. So, to complete that winning look, how about some conditioner? Okay. Here's lifeguard Jen. She must be quite used to this, looking out across stretches of water. I hope her view's normally a little nicer than this, though. Let's get on with it. Monkey face prickleback! Mm, her goggles need adjusting, but as Jen would say, she's out okay. Here's her view from the bridge. Mm, doesn't that moat water look inviting? Oh, Jen slips. She tries to hold on, but the bridge tilts, and she's in the hoango. But she seems out okay with that. Jen completes the course in 7.46. Right, the donkey! Here's our fifth attacker, Jake, who's about to take on the battle axes. Well, here comes another water blast. Jake lands on the incline, then continues into the grill. Once again, the gargoyles deliver. They're behaving quite sprightly today. A water joke, yes? As in, what a bad gag. Moving on, Jake survives the next water blast, but struggles on the axes and slip dimly daddy. Yes, it was all a bit hoppy, springy, and eventually splatty. But Jake recovers to finish in 6.44, and his round completes the first half. So let's check out the leaderboard. Giancarlo is out in front with 5.26, followed by Jake, Jen, Taya, and Paige, who's in the danger zone. So, Giancarlo is leading, but to be honest, his time of 5.26 isn't that fast. In fact, all the first half attackers have been a bit slow. Well, to be fair, the conditions are different each time. The course could be extra slippery today, or, and I know this sounds unlikely, the defenders could be on fine form. Well, I suppose the conditions are the same for everyone, so the next five attackers should find it just as tough. Yes, they'll have one eye on those water blasts, but the other eye on the clock. Remember, only the six fastest attackers will survive. Now, before we start the second half, let's stop for a moment to consider the state of play. We know that the six fastest attackers will stay in the tournament. In other words, at the end of this round, the four slowest will be leaving. They will be toast. Yeah. We also know that five attackers have already attempted the course, and Giancarlo is the fastest so far. Let's say this slice of bread is him. Mm, that leaves us with at least four attackers who are all slower than Giancarlo. So, whatever happens in the second half, we can say for certain that Giancarlo will not eat toast. Let's have a slice. No, let's go to the leaderboard first. So, confirmation that Giancarlo's in first place, followed by Jake, Jen, Taya and Paige. What do you want on yours? I'm having some of Taya's peanut butter jelly. Forget that, the defenders are back, so it's time to meet our next attacker. Brown Squirrel! Oh, Hayley, I'm not putting that on me toast. Here she is, about to tackle the battle axes. Oh, one ton! No one's getting past those gargoyles today. Hayley struggles back up. Oh, no! She's immediately back down. They're just starting to show off now, especially that one on the right. Hayley tries again. Oh, I don't believe it! But she's making great strides on the bridge. Ah, yes, if you speed a lot, you splat a lot. Splat a lot? That's a good name for a show. Hayley can be the logo. And despite all that splatting, Hayley still manages 557. Good enough to see her through. In that case, bring on the twit plat. Lovely. You defenders will splat today. Now, Rahul's hero is American President Barack Obama. Hello, Rahul. Good luck getting me. Oops, looks like Thorne doesn't need to. Rahul's taking care of it himself. Yes, the cheeky little bat chat has cost him dearly. Now, can he claw back some time on the incline? Stinky do diner! What was Rahul's battle cry again? You defenders will splat today. Hmm. Guess what I call Barack Obama? Your insults are as lame as your skill. Ooh, we got a fresh mouth in the boat. You know, I think we just might have something to wash that mouth clean. Ooh, trout spout. Yes, the water blast deals with Rahul's back chat, and he once more pays the price. Will his time suffer too much? Well, he's safe for now, but there are still three more attackers to come. OK, so here's some slop, just in case he's through. And how about some more slop, just in case he's out? Marvellous. Does anybody else think this is a bad idea? No, Aaron, we love him. Let's catch up with him at the incline. I'm doing good. Well, he seems a little grumpy. Don't know why, he's just cleared the incline with ease. But now he's about to face the conquering water blast. <laughs> oh, he survived. Here's an onslaught of slime from Mediva, but again he stands tall. So the gargoyles have finally been defeated. He steps triumphantly onto the axes, but Mediva's still slamming him. It's having an effect. He's beginning to wobble a bit, and oh, he slips, but somehow manages to hold on. Aaron, do you want to hear creepy voices for me? Here are this, deep red mashed potatoes. But it's not very often you see scab lost for words. Everyone's been left open mouth. Yeah, well, I don't think the gargoyle has a choice. 
Come on, Scab. My brother's more dirty than you. Your brother's more dirty than me. Fantastic. Well, Aaron's going to be the cleanest of them all once Scab finished with him. He's also achieved the cleanest round with no splats whatsoever. And that's reflected in the fastest time so far today. An impressive 415. OK, here's one splat he can't avoid. I'm going to show you the wall. Here's attacker number nine, Brian. <laughs> Uh-oh, Screamer! Well, we don't mind a Screamer as long as they're a good splatter. But any splat is a good splat, then she's fine. Up the slippery slope now. Hey, Brianne, you like the wall? <laughs> well, allow me to show you the dark side of the moat. That's not the friendliest invitation I've ever heard. Brianne steps carefully onto the rolling mace. Oh, but she slips and I'm sure she'll soon be in there. Oh, no, she's made it! <laughs> I don't think we've ever seen that before. Oh, but we've seen plenty of that. Back to that brilliant moment on the mace roll. It's practically impossible to survive if you slip, but she just did. Shame she then ruined it on the incline with the sloppy, slippy splat. She won't mind, though, because she's finished in an amazing time. 2.47, that's the fastest round by far. Here's our final attacker, Michael, who's already having a spot of bother on the axes. I'm going to scale these walls like my favourite plumber. He means Super Mario. Other plumbers are, of course, available. Michael, say, I'm going to win. Going to be the winner. Yeah, kind of. Now you will win, because you said it. Michael tackles the bridge. Oh, he slips, but just about hangs on. Not for long, though. Jabber prop wop. Yes, Super Michael tried to avoid the mucky moat water, but was soon up to his neck in it. Looks like he needs a good plumber. I think Peach is in another castle, Michael. Peach will have to wait, though, because Michael's still in the game and will be moving on to the next level. So round one is complete, and our six fastest attackers are Brianne, Aaron, Giancarlo, Michael, Haley, and Jake. So, the tournament's off to a great start. The Moat Challenge had that perfect combination of splatty resistance from the defenders and athletic ability from the attacker. Six now remain to take on our next challenge, Ditch the Dungeon. This round is critical. It determines who'll be making it to the grand final. So there really is everything to splat for. Yes, at the end of round two, we will be left with just four attackers. So far, they've raced as individuals round the moat, but Ditch the Dungeon is a different challenge entirely. Mm, for the first time, they will be competing in the same space together, and that can lead to all sorts of splatty wondrousness. Here's a reminder of the six attackers who've made it this far. They are Brianne, Aaron, Giancarlo, Michael, Haley, and Jake. Now, many delights await them in the next round, so I think we should take another look at the course. Mm, good idea. Here's Ditch the Dungeon in more detail. The challenge begins beneath the castle walls. The attackers must escape from the stock market, break through the gates, cross the splat walk, then climb up the loathsome ladder. Trying to slow them down will be three new defenders armed with a host of grimy, slimy weaponry. They'll also be guarding four flags, the all-important tickets to the final. The maths is simple. With six attackers and four flags, there aren't enough flags to go around. So, if they can get to the top and claim one, they're in the final. If they can't, they're out. We also just mentioned three new defenders, so let's check out who's guarding the dungeon. I'm the Kookaburra. That's one. I'm V. That's two. I'm Fatal. That's three. Time for a Fate... <coughs> oh. Here, here, here. Do you, do you need this? Oh, I got it. No? Fatal Destruction. Yes, three of the kingdom's finest. Down in the stocks, we have Aaron, Jake, Michael, Brianne, Giancarlo, and Haley. Coop's got the froth brother, Fatal's got a slime stick, and Vane's got to get his act together. And they're off! They shake off the stocks and head for the gate. All pretty easy so far. Things tend to get messy right about now. Yep, cue the froth. Pretty sure this is supposed to be water, so don't taste it. That sounds like pretty good advice to me, Coop. Just voice so you know the ladies are beating you right now. Oh dear. Brianne's now out in front on her own. Who could I have here? It's like a rotten avocado. I can't eat this. Have some. Oh, well, I'm hoping that was just a goo grenade. Whatever it was, it sent Brianne back into the papoodle. Now that's what I call a good old splat on the back. Brianne will not be thanking Vane for that. Haley builds up ahead of speed. Oh, and then heads back into the swicket. Kook has his sights set on Aaron now, and so has Vane. It's a double splat attack, and down the ladder he goes. Vane's there after Brianne. Kook too. Oh, and Aaron gets caught again. He was trying to splat Kook, but Vane put him off. Good thing I'm indestructible. You look disgusting. You've got green all over you. Green is out. And why is your hair green? I, I don't know. 
He's the only guy who could do it. Yeah, I can pull it off. You keep telling yourself that, Kook. Well, he might have dodgy hair, but he and the other defenders are on top of the attackers at the moment. Yes, Michael slides feet first and upends Giancarlo. Meanwhile, Aaron grabs Brianne and Jake just joins them for the ride. They all look pretty tired, but this round is far from over. Fatal! Engage switcheroo! Okay, Three, two, one! Surely not. Oh, they did it! Yeah, but why? Fatal swiftly pokes Michael, who then nudges Giancarlo. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Coop's tickling stick then sends Brienne and Aaron on their merry way. Nice dodge from Haley too. Laughter is the best medicine. <laughs> but Aaron might not be laughing when he watches this back. Brienne was slipping, but she made sure Aaron was going with her. How naughty. Fate has something for you guys. It's the Ball of Doom. <laughs> Haley goes down, but the ball's still after her. She slides on the splat walk and Frank Muggle. Crushed by the Doom. Actually, in the end, I think Haley caused as much mayhem as the Doom Ball. Yes, it splatted her and Brienne, but Haley went on to splat the boys. So I make that Doom Ball to Haley too. Oh, look what I have. This isn't like Vane. He's so focused today. I don't think he's mentioned food once. Michael's down in the sploosh. Then Haley's on her way, and she's soon followed by Giancarlo and Jake. But Brienne and Aaron are still up there. Vane fends off Brienne, but there's nothing he can do to stop Aaron. And he's the first attacker to claim a flag, which guarantees him a place in the final. Now, why aren't Kook and Fatal helping Vane? The attackers are all over him. I think Michael's broken through. Oh, and so is Brienne. In fact, she claims a flag before him. Now, is Haley up there too? Giancarlo thinks so. He's already taking his slide of shame. Yes, she has a flag. So Jake also slides out of the tournament. I'm trying to find this. Well, it was from Vane. Not sure about the other two, though. Jake and Giancarlo do the honorable thing, but the winners do the whooping and cheering thing. And why shouldn't they? Because Aaron, Brienne, Michael and Haley know they've made it to the final. What a great round! The defenders were on top early on, but the attackers came back strongly. Tough on Vane at the end, though. No one came to help him. Don't start feeling sorry for the defenders. Anyway, I'm sure they won't be so disorganised in the final. Yes, each defender knows one slip could cost them the crown. Funny, that's probably what the attackers are thinking too. Time now for that part of the show where we give you an informative guide on the sporting merits of each attacker. We like to call it the Splat Stat Attack. Once my colleague here places the Splat Stat hat on his head, then the Splat Stat Attack shall commence. <clears throat> so far, Haley has finished fifth and fourth, and Michael has managed a fourth and third. But Aaron and Brienne can't be separated. They have both won a round and have both finished second, so that makes them joint favourites. Excellent news! Usually, when we have joint favourites, we end up with a gripping final that's just too close to call. Here's a reminder of our four contenders. In the Capture the Crown round, we have Aaron, Brienne, Michael and Haley. But that's not all we have. Ah, uh, yes, this lot want to play too. The defenders. All six will be on duty guarding this spectacular course. They'll be looking out for the attackers who start with a trip to the Diamaya and the Barrier of All Barriers. They'll then attempt to cross the terrifying Tees, but need to avoid this splacken on their way to the scary go round. The attackers must then climb up over the annihilating arm and land on the gruesome twosome. The clobbering cannons are next, followed by a leap onto the royal ramps. And once they've climbed up the slippery rock wall, they'll find what they're looking for the majestic splatter crown. Down on the course, Medeva and Scab have teamed up. Fatal's on her own, and Kook and Vane are a pair, which leaves him. My name is Thorn. Thorn, Thorn. How dramatic. Here are the attackers. Brienne braves yellow, Haley's proud in pink, Michael's ready in red, and Aaron is appealing in orange. And they're off! Their first port of call is the Diane Meyer. Haley is stopped in her tracks, but Brienne simply glides over the barrier. Her extra height really helped there, and she's first to the team. Come on, Brienne! She takes their advice and takes one step at a time, but the water blast gets her. Now it's Michael's turn. He makes it to the second tee, but... Oh, Sprocket Box! Apparently there's only two of them. There's three. Oh. What a warm welcome. Come on, Haley, Ben! Well, she does, and surprise, surprise, it ends in a splat. Aaron takes a different approach. Not a total success, but at least he hasn't fallen yet. Brianna's not prepared to wait, though. She bumps into Aaron, and eventually they both end up in the hickey spots. Michael tries a second time, he slips, but makes a good recovery. Oh, but has he overbalanced? No, no, he recovers a second time and somehow makes it over. Now it's Haley's turn to try. Oh, this looks better, and yes, she's over too! Michael leaps for the scary go round, but crap! Back to Aaron at the tees. He's down to one shoe, and that's bound to make him even grumpier. Haley now leaping and landing! Brianne tackles the tees again, and this time she makes them look easy! Back to Haley. She approaches the arm, but she's under pressure. Floppy oh! one! What a splat from Scab, just as she reaches the arm. You look pretty in green, Haley. 
Scabs, yours looks pretty wet. Thanks, Scab. Back to joint favourite Aaron, who's still on the tees. But this time, he makes it over. Now, can Michael make it over the arm? No, not yet anyway. Aaron's catching up, but Michael's falling down. And the two of them simply swap places. Aaron now tries his look on the arm. Scab and Cooch pelt him with slime. He survives that, but he can't make his landing. Here's Brianne, and she also makes it onto the scary go round. She reaches the annihilating arm, but look out! Sausages! Double sausages! Triple sausages! It's an all out slime attack, but she survives and she also clears the arm. Next stop, the gruesome twosome. She leaps and oh, can she hold on? Not quite. Michael's also at the twosome. He leaps and he does make it. Aaron avoids a collision with Haley. Oh, and he avoids oh. a splacken too. This is a scary go around, not to lie down and go around. Haley's now ready for a big leap. She's on. She's off. Slime time. Oh, and Brienne's back in the biltong. Splacken! Oh, it could have been so much worse, but it still puts Aaron off. Yes, as Splackens go, that was pretty mild. Just a little tap on the shoulder to remind him it's still around. Haley now approaches the cannons. Haley, you're doing a great job so far, okay? Run through Just here. run right through. Don't listen, Haley. Bobby Bash Box. Referee! All aboard the main train. Oh, here comes another dude. Double Bobby Bash Box! Michael gets a clobbering. Fane shouldn't get away with that. Yes, but all this place cares about is results. In fact, the kingdom has spoken. Fane's just been named Defender of the Month. Seriously? Back to the action. Oh, Haley's down. Blabber Moose! So's Aaron. Back to Brienne. Oh, no! She can't make it onto the Royal Rams either. But Michael can. He's now in the lead. Fatal springs into action. And Haley springs into second place. Things are hotting up. Michael makes a leap for the wall. He tries to cling on, but he's down. Come on, Haley, Do it for the lady! She leaps, but she bounces straight off. This final is wide open. Brienne's now on the ramps, so she'll be next to try the wall. But Michael's closing in. Brienne, you can be a princess! I think Fatal means queen. But Brienne might have missed her chance. So it's Michael's turn to try the wall again. But the slime is raining down. He steadies himself, leaps, and this time he makes it. Aaron's now made it onto the ramps, but is it all too late? Haley's back on the ramps too! Fatal turns up the pressure on Michael. Oh, Haley's down again. Now can the Defender of the Month save the day? It's good, but not good enough, and Michael is over the wall! He takes the crown and becomes the new King of Splatterlot! Yeah! Quite a race. Indeed, Coop. Bad luck to Brienne, Aaron and Haley. They played their part, but he is the real star of the show! All hail King yeah. Michael! Well done indeed to our new king. He didn't have it all his own way, though. Both Brienne and Haley had their chances at the wall, but he was the only one who could stick his landing. Yes, but sticking one's landing isn't always a good thing, is it? I mean, if no one ever fell down, then we'd never have a splat of the day. It's pretty rare for anyone to withstand the charms of the Ball of Doom, and today was no exception. Four attackers fell victim here, and for that, along with many other contributions over the series, we're naming it Ball of Doom of the Month. Who's coming up with all these bogus awards? I didn't see one for best presenters of the month. We didn't even make the shortlist. What? We're the only presenters! Let's get back to King Michael's journey to the crown. So be the winner! Now you will win, because you said it! So Scab had spotted Michael's potential as early as round one, but his results suggested otherwise. He didn't do that well in either of the first two challenges and wasn't a favourite to win, but he saved his best till last and thoroughly deserved his victory. Oh. So let's hear from the man of the moment. My first act as King of Splatterlot is to have one of you thrown into the moat. I wish it could be all of you, but today it will be you, kook. Yes! <laughs> Well, Kook seems extremely happy about that. Well, you know Kook, he's always unpredictable. In fact, that's the only predictable thing about him. So, another superbly splatty tournament draws to a close. We'll have plenty more mess and mayhem for you soon, but for now, we'll leave you with the Splatterpult ceremony. Take it away, Kook. So, until next time, keep splatting.